Hey guys, so I want to wrap up my journey abroad in Korea with a few highlights and just some things that I want you to think about. Um, when you go abroad, everything is always different for everybody, you know? Um, you can listen or read about everybody else's experiences in different places like Korea. Um, like I said, uh, I, I did a lot of information before I went to Korea about, you know, jobs and like living there and stuff. The one thing I didn't know too much about was like um, paying like fines for leaving early, but that's because I never had to experience that before. Um, usually my companies always owned the apartments that I stayed in, so it was just like leave whenever you wanted to. Um, but now I know, <laughs> it's a living in Korea. But, um, oh well, I mean there was the thing about um, deposits that I did learn about, but I didn't know anything about leaving early. But um, a lot of that stuff you do learn from looking at people's um, adventures abroad. Um, their podcasts, their YouTube channels, and stuff like that. But that doesn't mean that's going to be the same for you. Everybody has their own experiences. They could have had a good time, an amazing time. They could have met a lot of people, had an amazing time, um, met a lot of different friends, and so forth. And then you go there, and you're just like, what? Like Cindy said, like, she had like 20,000 friends, and I have like two. Like, what's going on? Or I don't make any friends at all. Or it's horrible living here. Like, I want to go back home. You know, everybody's experience will be different. And that is based on so many different things. Um, one being like race, the other one being looks, and the other one being can you speak the language? Um, to give an example, uh, when I first moved to Japan years ago, um, me and my friend um, that I met there actually, um, we used to work for a Kaiwa called Nova at the time. And uh, me and him were both black, but um, the responses from different moms and grandmothers was different for the both of us. Um, they would always ask me like, oh, like, are you dating anybody and stuff like that? And I'm um, like, oh, I should hook you up with like my friend or, or my um, daughter or granddaughter or something. And I'm just like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, here to teach English. <laughs> I didn't know this was like a way to uh, mingle and date or what not. Um, but um, you know, that's what they used to tell me. And like, oh, you guys would make great kids and stuff like that. I'm like, oh, <laughs> I see where you're going with this. You know, but it was all about like looks for them. Like even though he's like black or whatever, you know, it was like, oh, but he's good looking. So they want to have some good looking kids. And I want good looking mixed grandchildren and stuff. They would say, I'm just like, oh, okay. Um, Thank you, I think. But um, for my friend, it was a lot different. He said they used to call him like bad names and stuff. And they weren't really like, you know, shoving their daughters or granddaughters on him and stuff like that. So it was a lot different for the both of us, um, both being black, but depending on looks, people act a certain way. So it's always something that makes people act a certain way. Um, as you know, in Korea, a lot of it, uh, Korea is very look based. I mean, there's plastic surgery. There's so many different face creams and different like patches to remove like pimples and stuff like that. A lot of stuff that I didn't even know about until I went to Korea. I was like, what? Like, this is a thing? But it's just so many ways to try to make yourself look that much more better, you know? So going to different locations, you learn that kind of stuff and what people kind of react to when you get there and you know Korea is more looks based you know so like going there you kind of know in advance that depending on your look you might experience different things that you wouldn't probably back home if people don't really care about that kind of thing you know um I had friends that were a little bit bigger that went to like Korea and they would get kind of negative responses or so from certain people because you know they like people that are skinny and stuff like that so it's just being aware of your surroundings so that you don't go somewhere and actually be sad you know because we're trying to avoid being sad in different places so just knowing if that stuff doesn't bother you and you can go there then like that's good but if it's gonna bother you then you probably should rethink about you know certain places that you go um do a little bit of research but like i said it could totally be different. It also depends on the location you go to. If you're more in the countryside or if you're more in a city and so forth, you know, because a lot of the things that I went through in Korea could have been avoided. You know, I was doing my best to work hard, you know, and I, something that I tried to turn off, but I couldn't because it's just not me, you know, but for anybody else who just turned that off, who just like, okay, you don't want me to teach so. I mean, I didn't care in the first place, so, you know, like, I just won't, you know, like some of my other teachers, my fellow teachers that were there, you know, they didn't really do anything, you know, it's like, 
read the books. They're like, what? I was like, I cliff note that. I'm like, cliff note? I'm like, what? I was like, what if you don't know something? Like, you know the small little details. Cliff notes don't get everything. Like, what the small little details? Because we were reading like big, okay, well, I was reading big books because they always gave me the hardest classes for like the book lessons. But um, I was reading like six, 700, 800 page books with them. And I'm just like, what if you don't know something? I'm like, ah, I just like look at the answers beforehand because like we're teachers. So, I mean, we know the answers already. So I'm just like, okay, I see what you did there. <laughs> you know, but like, I don't know, I couldn't do it. You know, and if I did stuff like that, I probably would have lived a lot better life while I was teaching there. You know, it would have been a lot better for me. That's the only thing that went wrong is that I was trying too hard and pretty much they didn't want anybody that tried hard. If that's if that's pretty much how I can see it, you know, um, everybody else would care less and were late with all their stuff. A lot of them, they were late with like their grades and like their evaluation and stuff like that. I was always on time, but I even got in trouble for being on time. Like, oh, mm, you're changing grades too much and the parents are asking why. And I'm like, well, that lets them know if their kid is doing better now or not as good as last time we met and stuff like that so to me it'd be a good thing <laughs> you know but it's like no it makes them sad or whatever and I'm like what I'll like, say since when can the parents even see like the grades oh because we just updated the system and I'm just like is this like a lie or something I'm like okay whatever you know but like even that like it just got to the point for them where they were just kind of making us up so I got written up for that I was like whatever like <laughs> I'm over it like I, I'm just trying to get out of here, you know, so I just, I was like, okay, whatever, sign, yeah, whatever, like, <laughs> you know, but like, even that, like, being on time, getting my stuff done on time was a problem for them just because they didn't like me anymore, you know, I was just like, okay, whatever, I'm almost out of here, you know, and then I had the roommate, um, my bigger roommate, he was like in his late 30s, if I'm correct, and my skinny roommate was in his like mid-20s, and I was in my late 20s. So for the big roommate, there could have been a thing of like hierarchy where he thought like, well, I'm the oldest, so everybody should be following me. You know, besides like his whole racism thing, him saying that he was racist or whatever, you know, maybe he just wanted everybody to follow him because he was older. And that is, you know, something that's prevalent in Japan and Korea. But the difference is like, I pay for that room, you know? So I'm not gonna sit there and be like, well, what do you wanna do? You know, <laughs> like, I pay too, you know? Like, we're on the same, and actually, I was paying more than them because I had my own bed, and they shared a bed. So like, I'm not gonna be following somebody where I pay for my own room, you know? Like, oh, what do you wanna do today, Sam? Like, no, no, you know? Like, I'm trying to do this today. Like, you do whatever you want, we good, you know? But like, maybe for him, that's not something he was like, used to or whatever and all of his like bad trauma or whatever from living in I think it was Vietnam or wherever he lived and how the other people treated him maybe he wanted to make me feel the same way um but you know maybe if I just followed his rules and stuff like that then like that would have been better for me you know and maybe he would have been happier <laughs> I guess um if anybody would likes to follow people or is, is down for that you know even if they don't like you or whatever you know if anybody else could have just like done what he wanted I'm sure they would have lived a lot better life in that circumstance you know but like I'm like I, I can't be doing this like at first it was like okay I was trying like oh, okay I can do that or whatever but then it started to get too much and I'm just like okay hold up <laughs> you know like I pay too you know so that's when it started to get a little bit more tricky you know and if I actually knew a lot more so yes when you look at people's vlogs in their podcasts, please listen to the, the more important details, which is like, yes, if you do leave early, then you're probably gonna have to pay or whatever. But I mean, like that does go depending on different apartments too. But um, I mean, I mean, I didn't know Korean that well to be understanding everything anyway, you know, but just try to ask especially the money questions the stuff that's gonna cost you money ask those questions a lot more yes like how much i gotta pay if i leave or how much is the the bills for this month you know how much is do i have to pay for water electricity is that included like all of them so just make sure you ask all those important 
money questions because I mean you never know and then the deposit since you already know that it's going to be very expensive to put down a deposit in Korea you know just know like how much is the deposit will I get my deposit back like I want a signature because you just never know somebody will take your deposit and then you lost five or twenty thousand dollars depending on how much you put down so take the information that you get but just know that what you think something is back home is going to be different from when you actually get there. Oh, Korea is going to be amazing, you know, and then you get there and it's totally different from what you expect. And you're just like, what, why, you know, or Japan, like anywhere you go, you're not in the environment. So you don't really know. So you take all the information you get from other people, but then you try to live it out yourself. You know, I knew that <laughs> teaching is horrible in Korea. I mean, I knew like there was like, honestly, looking on different forums and I like that so many I've been researching it for years with my friend there was like no school that had a good reputation like none like everybody just said you gotta be lucky like <laughs> like what you just gotta be lucky but that's it that's all people said you know but if you had that luck then you got something good but majority of people they got a lot of bad things you know um, losing their deposits their school shutting down and then getting kicked out and having to find a different job you know or there's the opposite where you go to those places and it's just not what you think it is and then you leave like quickly which they call runners it's something common that happens in japan and korea um, people expect life to be a certain way probably because of anime or korean dramas or something like that you know you go there and then it's like what like people are not how i thought they would be or they treat me bad or different and then like they're gone you know, or their job is horrible, you know, and they're just like, what? They just assume that I'm gonna do better than Cindy from that channel, you know, or whatever, you know, and then they get there and they're like, well, this is worse than Cindy, like, what? You know, but um, all that stuff, you know, it could be avoided, you know, if you just take it up from an angle, you know, if it's something that you're really not feeling, then think about it, if it's the right place for you, should you stay here? And if it's gonna affect you mentally, like, I mean, like, I should have left the job early. I, sh I should have moved out of that apartment early. But I was trying to, like, gaman. I was trying to really just persevere through it. I'm sorry, I don't know why I use Japanese. <laughs> I tried to persevere through it, you know, and, um, yeah, you saw where that got me. I was super depressed. Like, my teachers were, um, trying to help me because, like, outside of all that, I had a blast. I mean, in schools, my teachers love me, probably because of my grades, I got straight A's, so that could be why they love me, but they love me, <laughs> you know? Um, but, um, you know, they tried to help me. One, she lived in like Los Angeles, so she seemed like she was kind of hood when she was asking me what's going on. And I was just like, yeah, my roommate, he, he's like horrible. And I was explaining everything that was going on. And she's like, what? She was like, what did she say? Like. You better wreck that B or something. I was like, what? <laughs> you know, like, what did she, where did that come from? She was like, you better tell him that you're from LA. <laughs> I was like, what? She was like, you better punch him in the face. I was like, I can't do that. I was like, I live in your country. I live in Korea. She was like, oh, yeah. I was like, you're trying to get me sent home, you know, but she started laughing. But she's like, for real though, like, you gotta do something, but you can't let him sit there and take advantage of you, you know. She different because she was in LA, I swear. But <laughs> but um, she was really trying to help me. Um, a lot of other teachers were trying to help me. They were trying to find ways for me to still stay in Korea because they didn't want me to come back um, to America, they thought, or Japan, like anywhere. They was like, no, you know, like stay here. I'm sure it's because of my grades, like I said, but they're like, stay here, you know? And I, you know, I really wanted to finish learning the language. Like that was the reason why I went, but like, I. I was starting to hate school, like, I was starting to hate everything pretty much at the time, you know, and that's how they knew because they can see it on my face, like, at first I was, like, happy, and then as the semester went on, like, I didn't even want to go to school anymore, I was like, oh, I'll just stay at home, but I didn't want to stay at home either because he was there, I'm just like, oh, like, where do I go, you know, but, um, I just like that they really tried, I know, I wasn't trying because, I mean, I did my work. I still got good grades, but, like, when they asked me stuff, my stuff was always negative. Um, like, how's living in Korea or something? Because that was always what our writing assignments were about. Like, 
you know, associating something with like our personal lives going on in Korea, and it was always like something whore barbara. <laughs> and my teachers would have to grade it, just like, I'm sure they were like, what? <laughs> you know, but they already knew what was going on and they knew I was having a rough time, so they were nice, you know. And like I said, trying to find ways, they're like, there's scholarships to come back and stuff, please. And I'm just like, oh, we'll see. But I was really not feeling at the time, like, like I said, I finished my school like that. One of my last class, I finished that Thursday night and that Friday early morning, like at 5 a.m. No, earlier, like 3 a.m. I think I got up and I was on my plane right back to Japan. <laughs> I was out and I finished my class at like 10 p.m. that night. But yeah, I was like, I gotta get out of here. <laughs> um, but you know, besides that, there was also the people that I met at the gym. The gym people were amazing. They were always telling me hi, trying to tell me ways to like work out, you know. And I was learning Korean that way too. And I was being able to use Korean, you know. And then I switched gyms. And even at that gym, it was that much more amazing because everybody's like, oh, I mean, like dad and like grandpa and grandma and stuff, you know. And I'm just like, oh, like, well, like, appa and all my and stuff like that, abba G and stuff. And I'm just like, oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, oh, and they're like, you're so good looking and stuff. And I'm like, thank you. And you have a nice body. And I'm oh, can I touch and all that stuff? Some people, well, they touch before asking. Um, yeah, but, <laughs> but, yeah, but, you know, like, outside of all that, that, what, personal life that I had, which was, like, the job and, um, my home arrangements, like, everything else was amazing. Everybody else was so nice to me. I mean, slightly, there were some people that probably gave you a look like, what, like, who is that, or, you know, kind of thing, and you don't really know what they're thinking, you know, it's either good or bad, but, um, when I met other people like at the gym and um, at school and stuff, like I had a blast. And if none of that stuff happened probably with school, well school I was still, even after beating all that school stuff, I was sad but like I got over it. But like if the roommate thing didn't happen, <laughs> I'd probably still be in Korea right now. Um, Cause I mean, I was almost finished with the program like I said. Um, I was almost there and I could have been, uh, what, a permanent resident in um, Korea, like, because I was just passing my test, you know, which is probably another reason, like, my teachers didn't want me to leave, you know, but, um, you know, everything is different for everybody else. Yes, it does suck that everything revolves around, like, race and, um, looks and stuff, but I think as long as you know all of that information before you go somewhere, you kind of at least know what to expect, you know, so you can make life better for yourself. Because it's not good to go somewhere and like feel sad. I mean, it's not good to live in your own country and feel sad, you know. There's always that same things going on in your country, you know. Um, people talking about race or, or um, looks and stuff like that, you know. It's just being aware of your surroundings and trying to live the best life you can. Um... But yeah, that is pretty much it for my life in Korea. If there's any more questions about my life in Korea, you can always ask me on my Instagram, my Twitter, and so forth. Uh, but we're going to now switch back to Japan since I'm finally finished with um, my talks about Korea. I mean, there's probably stuff I miss here and there or didn't say, but I think that's good enough. <laughs> Um, uh, but besides that, yes, uh, I think we'll start next with my apartment tour because yes, everybody wants to see my small apartment and how everything is here because I don't really have much, um, like always, I live a pretty minimalistic life because I'm always traveling around, I mean, I, I'm always in a different country every year it seems, so yes, we're going to switch to that and like always, I will see you guys next time. But just remember to go out there and enjoy life. If you really want to go to Korea, if you really want to go to Japan, um, please try to come out at least once, you know. Um, I can't stress that a vacation and living is totally different. Um, some people have went on a vacation and actually had very bad experiences. But generally, I want to say you have better experience compared to living there because it's like an everyday lifestyle that you have to get accustomed to, you know. It's just not that high that you always have. You know, usually they say you have like a roller coaster of emotions living in different places compared to your own home country. You know, I mean, some people experience that in their home country depending on 
I mean, maybe like their family dynamics and friend dynamics and stuff like that. So it's a lot to take into consideration. But yeah, please do, do go out there and enjoy the world, you know. Um, if you ever experience something better than me or, uh, or worse than me, <laughs> uh, please always let me know. I do like to, you know, understand what other people are going through too because, I mean, life is hard. So why not, you know, build a community and try to help others, you know, so they know what to expect. But yes, on that note, I'll see you guys next time. Bye. You're still here? Thanks for watching the video until the end. Please don't forget to check out the description box below for info on my friends that were in the video. Hi! <laughs> product links, my other social media platforms, and my new product designer. If you guys love the video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And don't forget to comment because I really love reading and writing back to comments that fans leave. And thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Bye.